Hey, I'm doing well. How about you guys? Doing good. Yeah, doing good. <laughs> we're, re- we're really happy you called. Yeah. So, yeah, I was able to pull away for a little bit and, and call in. A, yeah. I was really excited about it, seeing you guys over there. And, That's cool. That's, uh, wait, are you saying you, are you, did you step out of church for a minute Ruben to call us? was telling us that he actually works and teaches at a church. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So I didn't, I didn't actually have to teach today, so I was able to step ah, out. That's awesome. So what did you want to talk about today? <clears throat> um, sorry, I'm a little under the weather. But um, yeah. I guess my fundamental question is, uh, I mean, personally, I like, you know, just getting to know people on a relational level. And so my fundamental question to you guys would be, um, you know, how did you become an atheist or... You know, that kind of fundamental question, why are you an atheist? If that's what you classify yourself as, I guess. Sure. Um, do you want to go first or do you want me to? Mine's relatively... Then you go right ahead. Brief. Okay. Um, so I actually, I, as far as uh, atheists and, and non-believers and skeptics that I've met who have um, found their way free, uh, I actually know what date it happened on. Um, which is unusual. Yeah, really? yeah, you can see his reaction, yeah. Most people can go, oh, yeah, it was this year, it was around this time in my life or whatever. Um, but I, I actually, uh, so uh, it was uh, September 20th, which is a, an anniversary. I've been trying to find some way of celebrating, but in a way I think not really doing anything is the best way of <laughs> celebrating that. September 20th. Uh, September 20th, 2014. Okay. Um, it was uh, in the wee hours of the morning. I stumbled across a YouTube video that was a clip from The Atheist Experience. It's a little-known show in Austin. You've probably never heard of it. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, it got me thinking about what it means to believe that, you know, the, the sort of classic modern American Christianity, oh, there's a God, he has a plan, this is what he wants. Um, and directly thinking about it and then watching, because it was in multiple parts, the clip, watching all three parts of the clip and then watching more of these discussions and thinking about what I believe and why and realizing, you know what, first realizing, you know what, skepticism is a good way of determining whether or not something is true, right? Questioning your own belief and not holding it precious and protecting it just because it's, you know, mine was something that helped me determine, you know, okay, well, just any, any sort of belief. And then as I applied that to religious beliefs, eventually, after looking at other beliefs over the course of 11 days, um, applying that to other beliefs and eventually applying that to like, okay, well, do I have a reason to believe that the Bible is inspired and that um, any one particular church is the correct church and that any one particular church or interpretation of a Bible that I can't determine is inspired is definitely the correct interpretation of a definitely existent God that definitely acts in this way. And at every single stage of that equation, I realized, well, at the end of the day, people come back to, well, you just have to have faith, which is just sort of, oh, well, you just have to believe, which, to be quite honest, is the same reason that people have, in many cases, people have a football team that they root for, right? I, there are football teams I root for, but I don't think that they're God. And uh, that sort of helped me find my way free. And so by actually on September 30th in the wee hours of the morning as the sun was rising, um, because this is back when my sleep cycle was almost entirely nocturnal, um, I watched the sunrise and I called myself an atheist for the first time. Can I... Just a follow-up question. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I guess in my experience, these things usually aren't like a like a switch being flipped. You know, was it? No, they're not. There yeah. Behind that? I mean, did you grow up in a religious household, or you know, were you exposed? I'm guessing to Christianity mainly. Or? Yeah. Um, it's sort of uh, there's a there's a Hitchens quote, which is that you know I'm an atheist in regards to all religion. However, my particular brand of atheism happens to be a Protestant atheism. It, it, he said something like that, which is that the religion that he found his way free from was a you know, uh, Protestant Christian. Obviously, he was in the UK. Um, so, no, I was baptized as an Episcopalian. Um, mm-hmm. I'm the child of an Episcopalian and a Catholic. Um, uh, well, yeah, uh, that are varying levels of specifically religious. 
uh, they're involved in their church now, um, even more so. What's what's kind of interesting is right as I was finding my as I you know finding my way free, starting calling myself an atheist because this that and the other, and and finding my way out. Um, uh, they were getting more involved in the church. <laughs> so, mm. so I, I like to joke that, well, you know, on the average, right, like I, I, atheism, my religiosity decreased and then they got more involved. So on the whole, like the family taken on <laughs> aggregate is, is the same level of, uh, of Jesus. Um, so, so wait, um, the, in, in response directly to your question is, I, I was exposed to that, and looking back at old papers from high school, I found in one of my journals this prayer that I'd written out to God to help me pass a test, which kind of caught me by surprise. Um, uh, for me, I was, uh, I, 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 I had a really interesting childhood. I, I bounced back and forth, and um, without getting too far into it, um, I spent time at one household that was incredibly into the church, and another that me. Um, so yeah. I was. I'm. I'm half Mexican. Um, as you know, most Latinos in my community, I was baptized Catholic. Um, but soon afterward, my um, uh, I I had family members. I'm not going to go into specifics. Who got really, really into uh, bo being born again Christians. And so that was my experience was as a born again Christian, and um, I bought it. I, I mean, I was I was I was in Reuben. Um, I was helping teach in Sunday schools. I was going to uh, the softball right every Friday uh, with the other churches. Um, I was there um, preaching to and feeding the homeless uh, one Sunday a month. Um, it's cool. Yeah, I feel like I was right there. Um, I think what, what wound up getting me, um, and I, 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 the, the, this is where I really actually admire Jamie, is he logicked his way out of it. Uh, that wasn't the case for me, actually. Um, I wasn't logicked into Christianity. I was raised in, in it. And it wasn't until later that I started to question those beliefs. And it was a big mix of things over many years. Um, and just to hit a couple, um, I saw some really... Uh, heinous types of abuse going on in the church. Um, mm. People being shunned, right? Yeah. Um, my, uh, one of my family members got the call to preach and he practiced his apologetics with me, which mm -hmm. put me in the unique position of taking on the non-believer side. <laughs> yeah. And um, I wound up finding that much more convincing. Um, and then on top of that, I... Um, when I prayed, I didn't think anybody was listening, and I thought there was something broken in me. I felt like there was something wrong that I wasn't getting. Um, I, I wasn't getting that feeling of the Holy Spirit, and so I searched, and I wound up looking outside of the church. I looked at um, a lot of different Eastern, Native, and um, Christian adjacent religions. So I did Bible studies um, with. Uh, you know, um, rabbis with Taoists, with Mormons, with J Doves, Jehovah's Witnesses, mm -hmm. uh, Seventh Day Adventists, um, and all of that. I've I got I, some I, questions for you after the show. Oh, dude, we can talk. Um, <laughs> but um, <clears throat> in the end, I I came to feel, and I do strongly uh, believe that there's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing broken about me. Yeah. Um, the fact is, is the church provided me with a scapegoat to things that was easy for me to uh, relate back to. Um, okay. And uh, when it came down to brass tacks, I just, I wasn't there. And then what pushed me out of this kind of pseudo, hey, I don't believe, to being here on the show is seeing the abuse. It's seeing um, uh, friends who have been kicked out of their homes as teenagers uh, because they were gay. Um, it was seeing entire families shunned from a church because the father was trans. It was um, seeing um, church members talking to other women in the church saying that when your husband wants sex, it's your wifely duty to give him sex. It took me a long time to realize that that's rape. Um, 
It was spare the rod, spoil the child, watching children get abused. Mm -hmm. um, it was those kinds of things that made me realize that there's enough harm in the church that being here and having this conversation with you is worth it to me. Yeah. So well, do, you, do you have any questions ahead. about it? I'm sorry, I kind of went on a huge rant. No, that's good. Um, that's, yeah, I like hearing those kinds of stories, man. Um, yeah, I appreciate you guys being really honest about that. Um, yeah. I guess one follow-up question sure. for me would, would be, uh, I guess on... On the whole, would you, would either of you describe, you know, kind of your conversion, I guess, if you could call it that, more of an emotional thing, or is it truly based on, um, I guess, evidential route? Like, it seems like I'm, I'm seeing, is it Eric, the uh, the bearded one? No, nope. no, that is Jamie, who is the uh, yeah, Jamie, the one with the luxurious the, red beard and suspenders. Yes. <laughs> so, so Jamie, it seems that from what I'm hearing, it's it was more of an evidential kind of walking your way through. And then for Eric, it would seem that it's more of a kind of an emotional response. Is that what I'm, would you it, agree with that? I, so I, I don't know about you, Jamie, for me, um, I think it probably started in emotion um, and wanting to question because I didn't feel like God was listening. Um, but it wasn't until I really applied logic that I went, I don't believe, and then further application of that, um, that went to, um, I'm an atheist, mm. right? What about you? Uh, so for me, like, a, like it was described there, um, it was mostly m m me uh, finding my way out by applying logic and reason and, and skepticism as the word of the day. You know, have thank you. That was I should have been using yeah. that word. That well, no, no, I, I was sorry. I was imagining like a Pee Wee's Playhouse situation. Skepticism, <laughs> yay! <laughs> but um, <laughs> but um, I would say uh, it it often is like an emotionally trying thing. We're gonna go a little like five minutes over because Nancy's been waiting for half the show and I asked her to call in. All right, we have um, three other people, so we so can I'm go I'm I'm shortening it. Yeah, okay. but um, we we may have gotten enough callers that we'll have to take some during. Uh, Vern's boot camp or ask them to after the show, right? Yeah. Um, we we'll do after show. But um, the last thing I was going to say is there, there, is a, there were a whole bunch of family factors that made it less of a directly emotional burden for me. So while, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to stand up as an example of, of logic, it can be very difficult. And I encourage anyone that's seeing this, that he heard me say that, to be like, whoa, oh, so easy for him. No, it had its own challenges. And you'll have your own challenges as well. Yeah, if, if you think that I wanted to lose some members of my family as far as mm. being able to talk to them or have open conversations, you're yeah. dead wrong. Um, hey, Ruben, um, please, please feel free to call in any week if you have other questions or you want to talk to an atheist about something. Mm -hmm. We're happy to talk to you. We're happy to have that conversation on air. If you want to get a hold of us privately, uh, you can uh, email us, mail at talkheathen.com. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, we're going to have to let you go, okay, man? No, it's all good, man. Thank you for your time, guys. Hope to call in later. Thank all you. Right, Sounds thanks. great. Take care, Ruben.